how much do you guys make here? I made $180,000. You walk out and then you walk up to here and then you say, hi, I'm- You started in the brothel business as a female. Yes. When you knew you wanted to transition to a man, were you worried about how that would affect your business? We can't have sex in this area because of the uh, jacuzzi. Are pimps involved in the brothel business? He took all of my money. Do you have security here if something happens or what happens? Do you want to try the film? Uh, no. Okay, I'll, I'll, can, yeah. I, can I film me? I don't know if you can film at all in here. I've been in touch with Tr Madam Trudy. Is that the... Trudy? Okay. Okay, I'm filming. Thank you so much. I'm um, so excited. Too. <laughs> yeah, so Brayden. Yes. Brayden. I love it. I'm so happy and so thankful that you took time out. You're iconic in the brothel world. <laughs> Sorry, you're really cute and you just said that and I'm like dying a little bit. Oh my gosh, thank oh. you. <laughs> thank you. You started in the brothel business as a female. Yes. When you knew you wanted to transition to a man, were you worried about how that would affect your business? Oh yeah, absolutely. That was the main reason why I'd put it off for so long. Because you were getting a lot of money being bunny. 2018. I made $180,000 that year. $180,000? Mm -hmm. And that is the most I've ever made and probably will ever make in my life. Because after that, I got hit with just spiraling depression because I'm trans and I was like not taking good care of myself. I was putting myself in situations where I was presenting feminine mm -hmm. and I was doing all these things that like inspired all this dysphoria and mm -hmm. I had already attempted suicide a few times prior to that, but it got really, really bad. It's almost like the success of your business affected your mental health because you were being so popular, being a female, but knowing inside that that's not who you were. Yeah. How much do you guys make here? Am I allowed to ask that? It depends on the person, really. Everyone has different rates. Yep, everybody has different rates. And they you, pick their own rates themselves. You set your own rates. We do have house minimums, um, which I'm technically not allowed to disclose. How much of it do you pay the house? 50 to 80 percent. Yeah. When you were bunny, were you more expensive than you are as Brayden? Yeah, a lot more. I was charging like six grand an hour. Six grand. <laughs> I miss it. I miss making that much money. Do you ever think, and this is probably so inappropriate to ask, but do you ever think of just like masquerading as bunny? Sometimes, but I, I won't pass. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. Um, and also, like, on top of that, like, I know where that got me in terms of my mental health before. It's not worth it. Money, yeah. money cannot buy your mental health, you exactly. know? Exactly. Now I'm here once every couple of months, and I'm only here for a couple of days, and I just see, you know, my appointment clients. I don't do lineups. I don't do barlers, which is where we meet people in the bar. What are lineups? Like, where do all the girls stand here yeah, or something? Yeah, so basically a lineup, I mean, every brothel does it. It's pretty much brothel tradition. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of them, but it's cool history, I guess, kind of. You, do you not like it? It's very, like, meat markety or what? Yeah, oh yeah, very meat markety. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they, you walk out, and then you walk up to here, and then you say, hi, I'm, and then whatever it is your name is. And then you go and you stand over here, and then you can't move. You can't say anything, you can't touch your hair, you can't like mess with anything, you have to like stay still in one position. Everybody does that, the client chooses who they want to take back, those people leave, and then these people here, once they're out of sight, can like move and talk and like breathe and shit. The downside to the fact that I'm trans and the way that this house handles that is I don't get to do lineups and this is not an appointment house, this is a lineup house. When I was working at Sherry's, I pulled most of my clients out of the bar, and I was really good at bar hustle. This is not a bar hustle house. So for me, it's not been incredibly helpful <laughs> that I don't go to lineups. Um, Sounds lucrative, because you're like, you yeah. Know. Does your family know that you work at a brothel? Yeah, I came out publicly about being trans in 2017 to like my fan base, and I came out that same day on Facebook to my entire family about being a sex worker and about being trans. Oh my gosh, that was a big day for them. Yeah, that was June 8th, 2017. I remember it because my mom likes to throw it in my face all the time as like the worst day of her life. So did you grow up with a very strict family, like a very conservative family? Yeah, I was raised evangelical. I had tried to come out to my parents before. I came out to my dad in 2014 as not being a girl. I just didn't know what I was. Um, and he didn't really want to hear it. I had tried to come out to my mom prior to doing this big public thing, but she wanted to tell me that like being gay was like having sex with pigs, and she didn't understand that I was trying to talk about being trans. She kept trying to say that I was a lesbian, and 
she was like, oh, well, everybody goes through that phase. And like, so it wasn't great. We're not in contact. Like, I didn't have a great relationship with my parents anyway, so. You don't talk to your parents? No, I cut them off in 2020, actually. So this is actually where we get ready for lineups. So there's a bell under here and I'm not gonna ring it, but they ring. Um, so everybody knows that there's a lineup, we need to show up. And so then everybody puts their phone in these boxes um, because we can't have our phones when we have clients. Uh, there is, I think, a concern about people taking clients outside of the house. I haven't really asked about why on the rules. Like booking the clients and not get like getting just pocketed money, not paying the ranch for Yeah. It. How many girls are in here at a time? Uh, so our license says that we can have up to 14. Okay. Um, and basically the, the way that it works in Nye County is you have to apply for different types of licenses to have different amounts of people. On property. Do you have your own room or do you like pay rent on a room or how does that work? Yeah. So it's interesting. You pay rent on a room and everybody seems to have a preferred room, but only people who have been here since like, there are some girls who have their own rooms, but they've been here for 10, 15, 20 years. They don't actually live here. They just come and work here, right? Some of them spend more time here than they do outside of the house. I know that when I first started working here, I did. I spent more time here than I did uh, in my own home. I got divorced in 2019 also from a person who would probably legally be considered a pimp. He took all of my money when we got divorced, so I, I have none. I have nothing from that year that I made. Because you didn't sign a prenup or something? Or? I didn't sign a prenup. When you're in a relationship like that, they have a lot of um, control over like your emotions and your mental state, and so he definitely manipulated me into giving him all of it. Does he know that he was, by all definitions, a pimp? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is he still pimping out the girls no. now? Are pimps involved in the brothel business? Sometimes, yeah. But pimps aren't legal. No. But brothels are legal. Yes. So how does that work? Usually the way that it goes is a pimp has a few girls um, and the bottom bitch is the one who makes the most and she earns the privilege of being able to work inside and that means going to the brothels. So do a lot of girls come here that were like working in Vegas as just prostitutes? Yeah. Yeah. And then they want to just, this is safer probably. It's, a, it's safer in the sense that we're protected from police. That's the primary thing that we're being protected from. And it offers you, like it did me, space from your pimp and a community where you can actually be like, I need help. You've left your pimp and you have nowhere to stay. You have no car. You don't have anything. You can come here. We have a company car so you can go get your groceries. We have food. We have like a place to stay. And while you're here, you're working, you're earning up that money and you're able to get yourself out of that hole. Is there danger in brothels? As much as there would be anywhere that you're in a private room by yourself with a stranger you've never met before. But do you have security here if something happens or what happens? So we have panic buttons here and you press the button and the sheriff's office is called immediately. And this house, like the brothels are priority for them because they know that it's a higher risk situation. So they will always dispatch somebody immediately. So we've got our uh, computer room in here. Everybody has their own computers and like we have internet access, but in case you don't have your own computer, there are computers here. You can check your emails, you can go on your social media. So we've got the cat room is what it's called. Okay. And um, this is where we all kind of hang out. I love it in here. We can watch movies, sometimes we play games, but primarily we sit here, we have coffee in the mornings. Um, and just spend time together. Yeah, and it's so comfy in here. It is cozy and just, it's all about like building the community because when you're, it used to be a lockdown house, right? So that means that you, you couldn't leave. If you arrive, you get tested on Monday, you arrive uh, by Tuesday and then you're here until next Tuesday. You cannot leave the premises and that was a Nye County regulation. Um, so it wasn't just this house, it was... Why would they do that to make sure like you're being sexually safe or something, or what? I don't get it. There's a lot of horophobia, right? It's oh. not a word. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but I know what you mean, yeah. <laughs> um, where there's a concern that, like, from the county perspective, that we're going to go out and, like, spread diseases. Oh my gosh. Um, but you guys are safer than a lot of us, because you guys are getting constantly getting tested. We get tested every 10 days. And so that's more than most people mm -hmm. get tested. Mm -hmm. A lot of the meeting in here was everybody doing like emotional support for each other and also making sure that like, even if two people don't really get along, 
um, that there's still not hostility between them. Mm. We're here for each other mm-hmm. and to sort of foster that and not foster competition. A lot of the other houses, especially at North, really thrive on competition. They want you to hate everybody else you're working with. So I could see it getting very competition, especially with that lineup and if the same girls get constantly getting picked and the rest of them, are, there's could be some tension, you yeah. know? Definitely. That's nice that it's not like it's a healthy environment here. Yeah, hopefully. Right. Yeah, or you try as your best. As you can yes, yeah. totally, totally. <laughs> you said you were presenting as Bunny, and then you, it was affecting your mental health, and you felt s- suicidal. Yeah. You said enough is enough, mm-hmm. and I'm going to live in my truth. I s- started looking for ways to um, to get on testosterone and, and what that process was going to look like and how much money I was going to need to save up and all those things. The primary thing that was expensive was my health insurance because I was making $180,000 a year according to the IRS. I didn't have any of that money, none of that was mine, so I had to find ways obviously working here uh, and selling video content and stuff to earn up the money so that I could afford to have health insurance again and then find a doctor who would prescribe me testosterone. Is it the first trans male? That they know of, yeah. That's worked in brothels? That's out, yes. That's, there, yes, I'm sure. There are plenty of us who aren't. <laughs> right, right, but that's presenting. Yeah, we had had a conversation at the end of February, beginning of March of like, okay, like we're getting ready to switch everything over and then everything shut down. Mm. Everything shut down. Do you remember the first day that you came here as Brayden. Did, oh. your, did you carry over any of your clients that were bunny clients? Yeah, I did. I have some that have just stuck with me because they like me for me and like my parts and my presentation don't really matter too much. I still do get emails from people that are like, I've been looking for a girl like you. And I'm like, oh, honey, <laughs> have you though? <laughs> right. How do you handle that? It depends. So like at, at first I would correct them recently because I need the money I've just been like oh yeah I'm happy to give you whatever you want you just like let them fetishize it because it's like you need you need that coin yeah so then here is uh, our kitchenette area and as you can see there's tea there's coffee this is all supplied by us this is not supplied by the ranch so if you've got snacks stuff that you're willing to share with other people that goes here and I don't know if you can smell but breakfast is, is starting to get yes. in and uh, the cook asked me to make sure you don't have her on camera I but, will um, so we actually have Someone who comes in. Hi. Oh, is that cookies? Cookies. Oh my yeah. God, they smell so good. Yeah. And there's. Uh, <laughs> and it's just so we're not on camera, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So you can see in here. Um, oh my God. So we all eat together our meals. Uh, breakfast, brunch, I guess, is 11:30, and dinner is at 4:30. And this is one of the rooms that technically belongs to one of the girls, but she shares it with everyone who needs a space to stay. Uh, we have a big shower, like, what this primarily gets used for is, um, so shower parties or sploshing, if you know what that is. Like peeing on people or what? <laughs> no, uh, sploshing is food play. Food play? Oh, like chocolate syrup and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, it's easy to clean up the mess. Uh, so oh. that happens in here. I tend to see a lot of couples. I also see a lot of uh, trans people, actually. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Trans um, men or women or yes, both? Yes, both. Cool. Yeah. Um, as soon as I came out in 2017, there was already interest. Um, and then when I actually started transitioning medically, that interest just increased. Um, Good. So, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, this room, these lights turn on. Um, this room's fun. Yeah, so it's, if you want to do like a strip club type party where you, we can't have sex in this area because of the uh, jacuzzi, but- Because like flu- sexually fluids or whatever? Yeah, but you can do like uh, strip teases and lap dances and stuff and get your client like in that sort of strip club vibe and then be like, oh, let's go back to the VIP room or whatever, which is just your room. And then we've got our hot tub, which we keep covered year round, but it's, it's available to be used year round as well. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's, it's so bright coming out of here. It's so it's big. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was not expecting to be this big. Wow. Yeah. And so clients will come out here and swim? Yeah, clients can swim. We also do pool parties. We do like barbecues. Obviously since the pandemic, not so much. So this yeah. is so fun. It's like a little labyrinth. It's nice. It is. It's like gorgeous. I'm not going to take you inside the bungalow, unfortunately. We have people actually staying here right now. Oh, like the clients? People who work here. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, so like me. Um, but that's, so that's their rooms right now. Uh, and each of the bungalow rooms has their own bathroom. There's a full kitchen in there, a uh, living room with like um, TV and couch and stuff. And nice. the owner, Ken, sometimes he stays there as well. Um, are you close to the owner? No, none of us are really. Like he just doesn't really talk to you guys or what? He is professionally distant. 
and I like that. I guess I'm not working right now, so I can do this part. I can walk with you this are, way. Are you not supposed to? It didn't, yeah. So like, if you were my client, I would have to send you through here and through this front door, and then I would go through the back. Oh my gosh. I wanted to see everybody. It's been a long time since I've been here. Does everyone love when you come in? Yeah. It's always like, oh, Brayden. Um, yes, you it, have good vibes. It warms my heart. Yes. You know? And it's that way for everybody. It's not just me. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so this is the bar. It's so nice. It's yeah. huge. It's huge. The fact that I get one serious email inquiry every month or so, and that really doesn't translate to a lot of appointments. So you becoming Brayden has really affected your business for the worse. Yeah. So last year, including the time that the ranch was open, I made $10,000 total. Compared to the $180,000 that you made as Bunny. In 2018, yeah. That I didn't get to keep. <laughs> it's such like a thing for you, I'm sure, because it's like, wow, like the money isn't equaling, but then you're probably so much happier now. So it's just like, oh yeah, my gosh. I'm happier. And the reason why I had stuck around as long as I have is I really, really, really want the brothels to stop being transphobic. It is a hostile place to work when you are trans. And it's not the house. It's not the people. It is the industry. That's the problem. They don't know how to market us. We don't fit in with what it is they're looking for. The ranch doesn't know how to advertise me either. If there's a good PR team here, like there's a way to spin your story and get tons of press about it because yeah. it, it's a very unique story and you being the only known trans man that works at a brothel, like that's a Huge. lot of business. Yeah. But <clears throat> there's just not the marketing for that here. Yeah, the kind of conclusion is the industry is just not ready for me right now. It's just not. I'm not making enough to justify having a full-time job doing what I do. Was that a hard thing to come to terms with? Yes. Yep. I'm still like super emotional about it. Are you going to miss it? Yeah. Because you love it. I do. So what are you going to do as a job? I'm broke enough that the government is going to pay for my college. I'm going to keep writing because I love it and I'm good at it. And I'm going to see where life takes me after that. You're going to figure it out because you're a yeah. creative person and you're a hustler. And us hustlers always figure out what's next for us, you know? Yeah. I'm definitely excited for like the next steps in my life. Keep sharing your story. I'm sure there are tons of people that maybe aren't out, like you were saying, but are looking up to you and you maybe don't even realize that. I hope that I can, I've made some type of dent in, in a way that makes it a lot safer for trans people to do this job because we're we're still sex workers we still go out and work we still go out and see clients it's just we're doing it on the streets if i could get them out of that situation and say hey here's another option where you can make more than 200 dollars an hour i can't wait to keep like in touch with you and to like follow your journey because you're at it like a crossroads in your life and i'm excited to see where it leads yeah definitely Thank you so much for doing this and Thank for coming you. early and taking the time. Definitely. It was my pleasure, Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amazing. You are awesome. Did you have fun? I did. Okay, yeah. good. I do enjoy being on camera. Yeah.